Okay, 702, uh, call us to order. Take minutes. Uh, JP Martin here. Tiffany Southern here. Randy Conner here. Tommy Grant here. Terry O'Connor here. Beth McFarlane here. Lewis Jones here. Eric Fisher here. Brady Oxford. Now we're welcome. Lewis. Yes. Yay! Official. Yeah. Sure. Did you get your email? I yes. still have to okay. verify. Um, so we are, this is a work session, so we have no minutes to approve, and then we can jump right in. What I'd like to do today is uh, talk about comprehensive, get some background and, and primer kind of on uh, our, our thoughts on a comprehensive trail. Um, I got my first marketing survey for the uh, Dakota Initiative nice. today. Oh. Um, as if, if we, I think Eric's mentioned this, well, I'll let you talk about it. But anyway, um, so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit, and then uh, if we've got some time and still want to work, we can jump into Bad Houses. So, see if we can't just get it done and pass it on. We waited for Bad Houses. Until we she waited until the mayor was back so that she could see the pictures <laughs> of the bats. Can't wait. The bats are so cute. They are absolutely dirty. <laughs> so, with that, uh, I will turn it over to Eric. Thank you, uh, Mr. Oxender. Uh, good to see everyone again tonight. Uh, good night to be in with all the rain coming through. So, it was super nice to on the side, walking the path. Um, so, I think pathways have been kind of generally discussed uh, in this body over the, over the years that I've been here. Um, and a lot of it started when we were back in the MI days brought on board to oversee that one, and I should have enough to share a little bit. And this is the original illustrator drawing, uh, very pretty, that uh, they put out at the time, which was the conceptual drawing of how this would, would look. Um, school's obviously not there yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. Got just enough here. Oh, we go. Thanks. One share. Okay. I was going to say, what numbers are you? I'm on it too. Well, and, and keep in mind, those, those numbers, uh, they changed the whole numbering system around on me uh, after this was all presented to council uh, back in 2015, 2016 time frame. Um, and so when they actually did the lot numbers, the whole different department did it, it changed up at that point, which is part of the fun. Um, And so, and I, I circled this was when we were talking, there was a lot of hubbub and discussing, it was in the yellow circle, which doesn't mean anything for this presentation, but that's when we were discussing the connector. Well, people love connectors today, but at the time, there was a lot of strong opinions about the connector, which is interesting, but everyone appreciates it being in now. Um, so in general, this plan, when it came forward, you know, the village, as you know, for the rest of what we call the classic village, doesn't have any sidewalks, doesn't have any pathway system. Um, this portion, when it was put into modern standards, came with a nice pathway system, a lot of green space which we've been discussing over the years in concert with those pathways. And folks got the first taste of those pathways uh, on a large scale, especially in COVID, and how nice it is to have an integrated pathway system for people to utilize uh, within the village boundaries. Um, and so that's kind of a good starting point from the discussion. Um, you know, I think in general there's there's a good amount of support. Now, of course, the, when I say that, it, it gets trickier when it when we're going to talk about some of the Linka stuff and you know how to put in pathways in the classic section because obviously they've been without pathways for so long that inevitably folks will again have some strong opinions about them and they're the ones that have to go in. But as people get used to them and use them, you know, it's it's fine and and people end up liking them. I know. Pathways are a nice thing, not just for leisure, leisure and walking, they're a safety issue too. Um, and I can tell you many nights I've left here and, and it makes me nervous because, you know, A, street lighting is the second part of this discussion. But the village has always prided itself on, on being a friendly, non-lit place, which is all well and good until you, know, you hit somebody. 
right? You can't see a dog in the, in the dark, you know? And, and there's plenty of people that walk late with our clothes, and it makes me super nervous when I drive out of here after a late meeting. In fact, the other day I was driving along Ponderosa, and I was going 20 miles an hour because I try to drive. My rule in the neighborhood is 500. I try to keep it to 500 for safety. Woman came around the corner, and I didn't see was running. And then I was kind of like, ooh, and I was able to zip to the middle of the road. You know, she was she was jogging, you know, properly against traffic. But nonetheless, I was I was more than 20, and it still was I felt it was a little too close for my comfort. So now joggers, bikers, people who are serious, would still run in the road, still jog in the road. But I prefer people with strollers pushing them late at night and stuff to be off the road, and people who are walking at night to be safe and be on a pathway system. Um, so jumping to that. I can kind of talk a little bit about, I drew this, this up today, um, and I kind of wanted to show people, I have one sharp reinforced now, I mean, at the time I usually have multiples, but I was at work today and I had this red one in my thing. Um, the big red line that goes, that will extend out towards where our old offices were, industrial, goes across State Route 3 all the way along the Nerva Lake Road to Cleveland and all the way north is our proposed project, or proposed shovel ready project with the link us money that we get, which we're going to, we had guesstimated right around 300 grand, we're throwing in a little bit more money, it'll probably be about a half million at the end of the day. We don't want to do any right of way taking, which is good. A lot of these practical projects we propose get very expensive very quickly because you've got to purchase ground. We fortunately have enough uh, right of way off the roadways to be able to put it in um, with we may need a minor easement, which is a lot cheaper to, to take once we engineer it than, than paying for a lot of right away. So we'd be able to utilize our existing area there. Um, and City of Columbus is excited because it's, you know, obviously the C-Max is up here, gets, you know, that's, there's a connection point up here for this, and then Columbus, uh, part of their link is, has a large pathway that's going to continue along 161 as well. Um, so this is our proposed project if the link us funding you know, ballot initiative passes in the fall, we would immediately get this money and we're on the top priority list for this. I've been at multiple meetings and pressing it and it's, uh, it's, it's gotten a lot of support, you know, uh, at our um, meetings, which is good. So it should get through the code approval process and, and we'll be able to get our funding if the voters so bless us, which is good. Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Help me understand the project overall. Is this a walking trail? Is this a coda trail? Help me. It, the, the, it it's an asphalt, so a good question. So asphalt would be an asphalt pathway. Those pathways built this modern standard around eight feet wide. Um, Mike and I guesstimate that probably realistically along the Nerva Lake Road we'll have a six foot wide path. Just because we'll be, you know, we'll, there's a little bit of topography at different spots. There's obviously, you know, we want to minimize the trees we take down and there's some, no choice in that by the way. It's just some points where we're going to have it, it's going to have you know, there's some bigger trees, which is part of the part of the deal when we develop one of these things. Um, and one thing too, along you know, along our boundaries on Cleveland, because part of this goes into City of Columbus Northway. But obviously, when, when they redid a bunch of stuff, we'll be able to beautify it in, in the sense of putting a proper sidewalk along, you know, in the right of way there. That's Columbus's right of way, but directly abuts our businesses. So it'll be a nice, safe, easier walking area, you know, between our, you know between our streets and, you know, and those businesses up there. So, which, you know, again, helps everybody out from a safety standpoint as well as a functional standpoint of walking. So, and then it will head all the way east to the Allen Creek Trail there at the end, so. Which part will head towards the uh, trail? Which is over on the east here, so this. That, that one, yeah, okay. This yeah. extends, so I, I assume you've been down here yeah. in our offices. So there's actually a, uh, you know, there's a big cul-de-sac at the end there. Right. And yeah, I've done, yeah, now that you said that, now I it was just we needed the visual of confirming right. which end. People, people <laughs> have, have basically made their own path there, and so we would, we would I don't think that, that owner, that office owner right there who's got that ground is going to mind because people already walk a path and it's a dirt path as it is now between the road and the, mm -hmm. you know, and the Allen Creek path. So that'll, that'll be a nice full connection all the way from there through, you know, from State Route 3, Cleveland, C-Max, and all the way up to 161, and then it'll touch on, you know, touch on what Columbus is doing up there as well, too. What about the new one that's coming from the Kilbourne area? Green Line? Green so Line, that's yeah. A, yes, very, it's also a very good question. So that's a very expensive um, thing they're going to do. Columbus has purchased the right-of-way, which was old railroad right-of-way, um, 
this is, you can see parts of it here as it extends up and it'll keep going and it falls under this. We just cleaned this out of all the homeless encampment that was under there. ODOT did that for us actually. Um, but it'll, it'll extend under this part of the bridge there and it just goes on and on and on. So, um, this are these work. timelines connected, or are they like going to be really far off between? Well, once these two different. How, you, yeah. So they, depending on how the funding, you know, we're going to get our funding. This is a that green line there is separate from us. Which not it's, it's Columbus's proposed okay. project under the link us um, priority list, right? And so if they're assigned, if they're if they're awarded their money for that. I don't know what year that goes in because it could be. It's it, it, this is spread off. This is this goes on forever. Okay. So. I make sure that our stuff is in the beginning, right? So we get our money in 2026, 2025 timeframe. Probably 2026 mm -hmm. is reasonable when we start construction and get that completed. Some of these projects are multi-year projects anyway, just because of the size and nature of them. Um, you know, I, I have to I have to look up, I think I, I have a sheet somewhere with that product, but it was a mini, mini million dollar product. The green one? Yeah. It's, I just, I'm looking at it right now. It's yeah. a, uh, engineering design is this year. Construction begins 2026. Right. If they're, so, if they're, they're going to go 2026 by 2027. There's going to multiple years. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so that's a that's a biggie. But you'll benefit from that. Mm -hmm. You know, because that'll that'll attack, that'll connect to a lot of stuff south and north along that old rail line, which will be nice. Um, so then, will that cross over Minerva Lake Road and connect into the rail line? It, it will the actually. So. Um, also a good question because right here this is Minerva Lake Road. Yeah. So there'll, there'll have to be a crossing which Columbus will pay for and install as part of the part of that money. Um, you know, and again, the, <laughs> these folks do a nice job of mowing the yards that they you know may not realize is not, not theirs, but they do a good job taking care of it. Um, and people will just have to be educated when when that goes through. But again, that won't be our project, it'll be the overall sales tax dollars like funding that through the Dakota initiative. Um, but at the end of the day, it'll be it, it'll be a nice connectivity thing for folks to utilize, you know, and it will directly intersect the village, so you benefit. Everybody benefits from that, which is good. And that's a big thing for kind of growing cities, right? Is diversifying the ability to transport oneself right. not just by car, but by mobile transportation, by foot, by choices. bicycle, yeah. getting to the bus. Right, and and it's it's a it's a challenge. Columbus is growing quick. Um, and they're a little behind the eight ball in some areas, and hopefully this will, this will catch some of that up, which will be good. And this will also provide access then for big chunk of the village to the schools. Right. Yeah, you'll be you'll be interconnected in multiple multiple points there, which will be good. Um, Question on that front. So I know right now a lot of the legacy section gets bused to the schools, even though they're under the mileage because they don't have a pathway to safely walk. Would that impact? I don't know. I don't know about the schools. You know, the, the schools talked to us about if we were doing anything before they were constructed because it affected their their monies as well too. And I said no. We won't. You know, we, we told them that essentially we won't have anything ready. You know, here by the time we get there, mm -hmm. um, you would have to have you, you would have to have a lot of pathway development in, in these areas. And it's going to get more difficult off of Minerva Lake Road. You know, not that we won't have access to funds, which we will, but it's going to be, in my opinion, some years down the road. Um, you know, every year we'll, we'll get, we'll have some money allotted to a pathway or sidewalk, right? And and that's money that, again, through the Lincoln's project that will give it to us. You know, 100,000 here, 100,000 there, and we get, we get those things done. But again, it'll be, it, it'll be, it's gonna have to be, I think the discussions get a little more difficult in some of these cases, because you've got a little bit different densities between some of these streets, you've got, you know, different, you know, topography, um, and, and, uh, I would say with something like this where you're converting, sometimes it may not be the best or the correct choice, you know? Just, it's gonna be, I think, a discussion with the, in the streets and people who are on the streets and the council at the time and see how they wanna, how they wanna approach that. Um, definitively, you know, I think that, you know, obviously the primary interconnection of the village along the Lake Road is the top priority, which is what we put in for. Um, additionally on this map, just to kind of jump down to some other ones too, there are, there are some other places which have been discussed over the course of time. And, you know, the lake, I just put in funding the other week. Um, so as part of that lake restoration project, we have to clear back um, a significant footage back from the lake's edge of 
debris and trees and things like dropping something like as part of our as part of our problem with lake cleanup and with expenses related to the lake and the dredging and the silt and debris that sits there. So we, we have crap coming in from the west and we also have our own stuff dropping into the lake. And so in order to properly maintain the lake, um, you know, you'll get to hear more about it as Mike uh, Flickinger proceeds on with his with Jacob's recommendations and stuff. We're going to have to clear that area back. Um, as part of that, we're going to, you know, I believe our chances are pretty good after working with Joyce B's office. Um, we're going to get some money for uh, site work and, and we'll be part of that pay for with the site work and um, pathway integration. So, because we're obviously going to maintenance the lake, and if we've already got 15 foot clearance back uh, on that water's edge, then we have plenty of room to put in a, a properly designed pathway around it. There's a little topography you know, on the south side, which is going to need some. Uh, work along the hillside, but other than that, we control the, everything around the lake as it stands, um, and we'll be able to do all of that. So that's that's also going to be a funded a funded project, and you can see here this is where it gets a little tricky along here, um, just because of the, the topography. But it's again, it's all engineerable, no cost. Otherwise, all this is on land, you know, uh, many many feet, you know, back into the yard. And I realize again, some people have. You know, you'll see a patio here, fire pit there, things like that. People have, you know, there's a nice patio someone built right there. <laughs> yeah, probably looks great. But again, it's not theirs. <laughs> it's just, people just have to be educated, it's not their land. So, and I know they think that, but it's not. So, I think there's some nice wood piles in here. We walk back here and stuff like that. And, you know, people spread into there. So, it is what it is. But nonetheless, there'll be funding that then interconnects it with our existing pathway here, and again, gives the uh, an extended pathway for our folks to utilize it, and uh, we'll need that anyways to access parts of the lake with our equipment and maintenance it properly. So that'll be part of the that'll be part of the engineering and restoration of the lake, and that will also be funded with the new lux, and we're applying to multiple pots of money. I like the plan of that, because, at least from what I've heard so far, because I think it addresses more than just adding something or fixing uh, remediating of the lake but it's like it's creating additional value to the residents right. by making the lake additionally more enjoyable right instead of just the places you can access it but it also helps create a plan for easier less remediation in the future like it's saving right. dollars down the road right. in the future so i it, it seems like a multi-prong approach right. and i like that a lot better than Right. Scoop out the dirt. Well, we and, and scoop out the dirt is only part. It's part. It's just, it's just going to fill back up again. Yeah. With more crap. Yeah, well, exactly. We can't have a village paying half a million to seven hundred thousand dollars a pop every time you have to clean the lake out. It's just not going to fly for the long term viability of the budget. Um, and so we're going to take our, our given money now, and we've got you know application to the state. We'll have more federal money in, uh, and hopefully be able to do the project in full. Uh, it might take a couple of phases, a couple of years to do it, but 2025, 2026, we should be able to uh, get things rolling on that. Um, and so the other part of this is, um, you know, I, I'll jump over here to the pool as well too. This is all of our controlled area here as well. And, and some of you may recall, there was some hubbub with this a few years ago, but in time, this was the initial plan for a pathway that connects through our reserve and the existing right of way that gets then connects into you know the new subdivision and connects people here and so that's something that because that's off to the green line right going across to the pool right. right right that's correct and there's there's a reserve there mm -hmm. and there's an old right of way that's that's ours and so we'll do that and we'll obviously complete the connection this way a lot of people also don't know about this we have um, room here between these houses I'll show you yeah kids walk through there all right and it's a it, it's actually a legitimate right of way that's ours. Um, And so you can see it here. This was this is where it is now. People, again, I'm not the one that was approving permits back in the day, but you know we approved a, you know somewhere along the line, someone got a driveway in there. That's fine. There's plenty of room to put a pathway right here and connect into our get people off of the Ponderosa and have a nice easy connection into our pool and recreation area from the rear side there. So all those fun fun little things to do. So. Um, which is good. And then, of course, the other one, you know, is, you know, getting Jordan Road connected to the rest. And, you know, there's, we secured a large 25-foot easement here when this house was in foreclosure. We've got a lot of acts, uh, we've got a lot of um, easements here for when we did all of this. And we'll complete this 
point here to here to connect Jordan, get it all back onto our property. And depending how, depending how the North Lake is dealt with, um, I'm treating it under this with the pathway that goes over the lake. But at the same time, if this lake gets filled in, it's part of you know, uh, potential options you know, for how we deal with our fill over here to save money. Um, this may be a very different looking area and a very different pathway design. You know? So either way, that's how we get people from Jordan back into onto the rest of the pathway system on the Nerva Lake Road. Just make the interconnection right there. And obviously there's already the MI subdivision right here on this connection and our pathway's already there. So everything's mm -hmm. attached at that point. Um, those are the things, these are the things that we see as, you know, from my viewpoint, CSB funded over the next several years in one form or another. Um, you know, and how they, how they proceed, and I think, I think most of the council now, you know, is, you know, does one of these you know, projects or another at this point will also approve it. So I guess the question is, you know, moving forward, you know, we, we've got those, you know, in the hopper, so to speak, it's, it's kind of like, I guess I can go over things now as to where, maybe some other interesting interconnections and, and you know, things get a little more challenging to some degree, but um, Village has other opportunities, which I'll, I'll kind of go over in short here, let you see it. You know, we, we talked a little bit about there may or may not be challenges, and really there's going to be a lot of discussion with individual residential streets on whether or not you want to see pathway put in. But what I will tell you is that there's, there's plenty of opportunity to interconnect between the streets themselves with just pathway. And that, those happen because, we, again, we have unplatted, undeveloped right of way. Some of this may be a little more challenging than others, depending on how we, you know, how we handle something like this situation, where, but again, what happened was, is years ago when this was platted, and we're talking decades, when I say years, um, somebody thought, you know, put in for that approval, and then somebody approved it, and probably it was part of the overall development, probably the development, because those houses are oriented such that the garages aimed towards the undeveloped right of way. Now it may have been that they, they thought they were going to put the streets in because that's what they're designed for is the streets. And so those houses are facing whatever street that was supposed to be for whatever reason they didn't the village didn't you know, change the plan and I don't this is lost to the annals of history. Um, change the plan and just did it this way. Which leaves us with some you know some interesting challenges and discussions because it's still public right of way. It's un you know, it's undeveloped right away, but it's still there, it's still our property. So are you thinking put a pathway in there, or put a street connector in there? No, we wouldn't, we, we, what we would do is, you know, I would think that if, you would have to, you could, you've got room to do pathways, but some people I think have expanded on this a little bit in some places. So, again, this is, this is where we get into a little more, you know, challenge discussions. Um, you know, we have to talk to people, we have to, go through this with the council, how, how would we rectify this? Will we end up splitting this driveway into two parts so we can put a pathway down the middle? You know, what would we do here to make the make the connection? This one, this is interesting too, we're actually, this is an abandoned um, shed that's falling apart that's actually, it's been become ours. Because <laughs> this homeowner, A, either didn't realize it or, you know, they came in thinking this was theirs and said, well, I, can I, I brought a permit to get a new roof or like, that doesn't belong there. No, we're not going to approve the permit, you know, for you to do that. And I'm like, well, I, I fall in part. So, well, it becomes ours, essentially. It's ours at this point. I mean, it's not his, it's ours. So we have to remove it. So that's going to go away. Um, you know, after we did it. So is that line going to that? Is that their driveway or is that they actually have, just a, okay. They have a driveway here. And, you know, it's not a heavily developed driveway, newly asphalted, but, you know, there's, there's it actually, sorry, that says marked differently than on um, this is the one that's you can see the holes in the roof here by the last photo too it's, it's falling apart so that's going to be removed but then yeah so there's room for us and this is still go room. next to that part right. so yeah. i'm not i'm not saying that this is a good idea at all but this is the first time i've looked at all of this if we if we offered residents the opportunity to buy that property then we would see increased tax revenue some amount of increased tax revenue on expanded property. I, I would tell you that that's... You will see dollars if that you will see land that. Will not see. It's not. It's not worth it. I mean, it's, it's not worth this, in my opinion, to give any of the ground back because it's, you know, they, they did that down here. And this was, again, I think you probably have the data for this, but at some point, council vacated either side of the right of way, which made sense because this was put in and, 
you know, no one's ever going to use this except them. This is where the case where vacation made sense, and they gave each half under the law back to the joint they, property. They, they gave or they sold? No, they gave. When you vacate a piece of property, you give it to either homeowner in equal or equal in, in uh, adjoining property owners in equal amount as they sell, sell it. it. The village can do that. You can sell it. But, they chose not to that But they, they, they acted under the, the state law that allowed for vacation. Right. And the problem that you're going to have doing that, and we've already seen it, is you do it for one, you're going to have to do it for all, and there are plenty of people that believe that they would like the property that is next to them, mm -hmm. and you're opening a huge can of worms. Right. Yeah, I'm just, like I said, I'm not advocating yeah. for it. Yeah. I, start, I start to think about the railway lines that got bought by whoever owned them before, and well, they owned them for like 30 years until they got sold to the city of Columbus. Right. The right. railway, and I'm like, man, that was just waiting for that to happen. So you're going right. to sell it to them and then ask to buy it back in 40 years? Right away is right a very uh, tricky, uh, especially railroad ones, because they, 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 they outdate majority of title searches, you know, and you, you have a lot of issues so to clear title. And so Columbus has to take that with uh, a bit of risk as to the prior owner, because you just, you can never clear certain things off from, from an age standpoint in, in history. Regardless, rivers on the You can see here where they, they obviously, you know, when they platted this, they clearly platted a section here that was meant for a pathway connector. Oops, sorry about that. Clearly meant you know, for pathway connector, which kind of zigs and zags through the houses and gets up to the Nerva Lake Road. So again, these little, these little bitty anomalies exist throughout the village like this. Um, you know, uh, let's find another decent one here. There's one here, and this is, you know, goes, which driveway's on, goes from here, you know, but this is all public right away right here. And it goes up to the other one. Oh, wow. Yeah, it goes to the Nerva Lake Road and connects down to here, so. Yeah. Huh. And her part of her structure can actually be in that. <laughs> so awkward. <laughs> that's an older house. See, that's been there for a long time. Right. Well, it's part of that's part of the problem. We find is that sometimes they're built. They, the survey survey technology has changed significantly. And the old and this is why in our current code uh, that was adopted recently, uh, anyone who does not have I don't know, it's ten or fifteen years, I remember we put it there on the top of my head, does not have a modern survey in the past decade, fifteen years now. If you come in for a fence or any working property, you are required to get a new survey because the data, the underlying data that they utilize here are back from 1907, right, to set that. And so inevitably, even if you find your pens, it does not mean it is an accurate, it is an accurate place of where the lines are, um, just because things have gotten pretty precise. Um, which, again, is why we find things where buildings get built across or in the right of ways because there are certain techniques for dated. Is there a map similar to this of the village and all of those right of ways? Um, well, it's no, called it's the auditor's so office, essentially. I mean, so that, that that's. I'll rephrase. Is there a simplistic map similar <laughs> to this that doesn't have all? I understand what it is, but doesn't have all of that sort the of answer full is, on top of it. The answer is no. Okay. And the reason is is that it's you know it, these are done on plats, and so which are then adapted to the the, the auditor's um, LIS here, which is a like information system GIS, whatever you want to call it. Um, it would be something we would have to produce. Specific for our planning purposes, which is doable, um, just to show where all these kind of strange lines are, you know, without the clutter. And I understand what you're asking, um, and so we'll have to just we'll have to just look into that as we get, you know, more into the planning aspects of this because it, it would be helpful to see it that way. I mean, you can go in there to that that auditor's website and turn. Well, there's different layers. You can turn off those well the layers, and then I can. Doesn't mean everybody else can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> turn off the it, but I mean, well, then you can print it and then make one of these, oh, right? What, what, so you can. But what she's asking for is also to get rid of the parcel lines and all the individual parcels. She just wants to see the right of way, which we can, we can, I think, do. We're just going to have to pull something down and make a map out of it. I was just thinking, in order to better right. understand for all the villagers, here's mm -hmm. you know property right. lines, and then here's village green space or right of ways. Mm -hmm. Because right now there's a lot of people who don't know about them, mm -hmm. and it's not that this website hasn't been out there forever and available. Yeah. They just don't know. Yeah, yeah. I think and if, you turned, if you turned everything off mm -hmm. and got a map that then just looked this ish, or just and then just took a took a sharpie, you know, turned yeah. it all back on for yourself right. and took a sharpie to the printout. But you see what I'm saying? Like right. looking at this, people are just going to be like, that's too confusing and yeah. shut their eyes. Mm -hmm. But I think there's value in having no, yeah, no, yeah. We can We can uh, work on making something happen. Um, they won't let you turn off. If you turn off the partial lines, you'll see nothing. Right. Right. Just, 
It's been so, gone. Oh, but you could so leave the partial lens on and just highlight, you, you know, use some other way of highlighting where all the patterns right. are. I like your red lines on the other one. There's you know, you could do no some right. bright highlights. But, you know, it's, that's what it's easy, even under that circumstance, to miss these yeah. small little anomalies. So the easiest way to do this is to maybe get the one. The auditor's got a, a data set which will just be the right of way. And we'll, we'll pull that down and see if we can't produce a nice snap out of this. So, do it. Regardless, I want to simply point out that, you know, those are things for the thought process to say, okay, you know, how do we, it's part of this is interconnecting the streets, you know, to make it easier on the, on the walking and, you know, biking public to some degree. Um, and then, you know, long term beyond that is, you know, what streets, should be sidewalk, where should they be sidewalk or pathway or how we look at it. Because you know, our general plan is to try to pathway one side of the street, not pathway both sides. You know, um, sometimes that's easier to deal with uh, and cheaper, quite frankly. So we can at least get people walking on, on you know, on that interconnectivity. Now, did you say the pathway has to be on the side with the hydrants or without the hydrants? I would, we, we're kind of, so going back to that map, we, ha we have to, we have to put it on, so if I go, sorry, first of all, our right of way at this point is, only goes to the midline in front of these apartments. Columbus comes to the midpoint of the street, so Columbus controls this point of the street. Mm -hmm. We also, in order to make this connection here, need to be on our side and then crossing over, because we have a light here with a, with a you know, sort of for a, a crosswalk, a safety purpose here. So this is where, this is where we need to line up. And then, obviously, we'll be on the same side of the pool. It goes here. We'll have to put in a cross point somewhere here because we already have a pathway that obviously goes in front of the new building, goes in front of the mines. We don't need to obviously put a pathway on both sides. Uh, once we get over here, there'll have to be a determination. I drew it back to the north side for a matter of, it doesn't have to be on the north side here. You know, we can, I did that simply as a matter of course that we're going to make a connection here, anyways. In my opinion, it's safer to make a crossing over here, put them on the north side, than it is at this busy intersection, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So we're already lining up here. Inevitably, there'll have to be some cross point here, but if the majority of people are, who are walking this way are already situated here, it's safer. Because I think there's less people that are, we will be putting in some sidewalk with this intersection um, up to a certain point, since we're already doing it. Um, and so this will connect into the, the, here, and then of course, how the village proceeds with sidewalk and pathway into the into the rest of that section is going to be up for discussion, if at all. So, those are the general, just some general. So the points. sidewalk. So at this point, the planning is to put the sidewalk on generally, except in front of the community building. It would generally be on the north side. Correct. Okay. Correct. In general, um, it, it, it kind of has to be on the north side from this point back, so mm -hmm. because of where we have to line up. And again, I put it assumed on the north side would be, you know, if it's just to line it up with Cleveland. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but again, it's a safety issue, I think. It's better to do it back here. We'll just make one cross across the street here and we're there. So. I have a question. Yes. So, if it was on the north side of the street, per se, does that mean that you go three feet on either side, and just kind of scoot the street over a little bit, and the pathway goes up? North side, uh -huh. where you just kind of just wipe out all six feet on the north side and put that back. No shoot. It's great to look at that and see the the where the right of way actually exists from the street, so you right. can really have a good example of how much space is actually not a residence property right. versus what is the village's land, right. but so they're required to maintain. So you can get an idea of you know from from here to here. It's generally a, a, a 12-ish foot uh, distance from the edge of pavement into the yard. So 14 feet is where we're at, and probably a little short. So I'd say we're close to 15 foot right here, um, if I put it directly at the edge of pavement. But you have plenty of room in there to situate a pathway of six feet in width, um, you know, in that space. And so you're thinking lawn strip, sidewalk, Yes. And then? Yeah, we wouldn't, we, we wouldn't want it to directly abut the roadway, especially when we don't have a curb roadway. 
uh, a lot of this. There's, just, there's definitely a safety issue. We want to get people, you know, children make errors on their bike. Adults can make an error and fall. We don't want them falling into the street. We want to give them a, a two to three foot buffer. Land you know? mm -hmm. Right. So, so we, we, like in that instance, we've got 14 feet right. to the residents that wouldn't look like nothing. Right. Because mm -hmm. they would be two, three feet yeah. and then the pass, and then they would say, this is my yard again. Inevitably, it, that's, it's going to be, it, it's going to cause some unhappiness initially uh, for, for people who are along the pathway. That, I expect, fully expect that. Uh, we're going to have anomalies where, like, um, the flagpole right there is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're going to have to... And so most of it is going to affect the people on the north side. The south side people aren't going to be affected. Awesome. It, that's the yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. so it's like, it, it, it almost seems like, I know it would probably be more costly to, like, even it. But and that's probably not that would, a real. That would over five hundred thousand million. Yeah. There's no, reason, there's no reason to do that. There's yeah. No reason. It, it, you're gonna have some. Again, you're gonna have to take some flack. People are gonna come in here. And they're gonna be unhappy. Mm -hmm. So possible, here's just a general, and I know the answer to this, but at the end of the day, you have unhappy people. Right. But if council approves this, we have the money to do it. Right. Is there anything that residents can do to say no? This is. No, if you're going to get that's up to the council as the representatives of, the, of this particular project, it's this is not an opt-out choice. You know, we we don't put in, we don't take five hundred thousand dollars and put in a path that I'm fairly sure would avoid us. You have to complete the path. Correct. You have to engineer it and complete it to get your money. Um, that's the way it works. So, yeah, I mean, it's it, it's for this is one of those key projects for the greater good. No, I, I would assume everybody here, not everybody is going to be, you know. I'm not going to say it's 100% of happiness. I think some people are going to be like, hey, you know, some people are going to be very vocal, and some people are going to be like, yeah, I'm fine with that, right? There's going to be, there's going to be a mix. I don't know what that mix is going to be. Uh, not doing it on both sides, you'll have half of the Yeah, we won't have as many people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, and it's not funny. Yeah, it's, I, I just needed to, like, yeah, just. So three foot yeah. path on one side now. So right now then the parking's all along the south side and it would stay on the south side? Say, say one more time. The parking. So we're oh, allowing yeah. parking along the street, so we'll keep that on the south <laughs> side. Right, so so I think eight, yeah, I think so if I may. Well and why I'm saying that is I'm just kinda like running through my head. Because I drive through I think about this. With the mailboxes, it's like, can all the mailboxes be on the side where the cars are not? Yes, they can. So could. then... <laughs> you, you could require that. That's, that's so then the, well, then guy, the, the mail the guy can, like, yeah. zoom through, and the plow people don't have to, you know, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be... Well, it's just like the consideration when they build MI that they were going to just take all the mailboxes and have them in one central location so the post office guy mm -hmm. could just dole it out. Mm -hmm. We had told them no. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that was yeah, what I mean, it's just like, yeah. hey, let's right. just do that for the whole neighborhood. But they could have put them on, but in the new section, they could have put them all on. Oh, that's, that's weird. Like, it's like an apartment. Or so, what, all on one side, just to have all the mailboxes yeah. on one lawn? But then I got across the street. Maybe that's the time of day that's just crappy. I can't get my mail. Like, go out. So, if you drive out, if you drive on a new ruler, right, but still, if you go along to College, where I live, over in New Orleans, Central College is a very long street, a lot of houses along it, and then all those folks have to be on the uh, north side of the road. Yeah. Uh, the mailbox. And there's a decent amount of houses out there. So it's just. It it's just yeah. what it What's that? So I'm risking getting hit by a car to get my mail every day? They do have to cross. That is one of the side points that, that they do mm -hmm. have to cross the road to get it. There's some, there's some running in the 45 mile per hour zone because it's a fast road right there. So, right. Mm -hmm. Hard yeah. pass. Well, yeah, the difference but is that it's forty-five miles. Yeah, you, you would you yeah. It's always been that way there. I'm guessing. So we talk about making some, making a change, right? Yeah, and that's that's right. the problem. Um, so to to refocus a little bit here, the the original thought for us was to present um, simply a a walking trail, like a comprehensive plan. So that if and when money comes available, mm -hmm. or if there's a grant that pops up and they say, what would you like to do and why? We would be mm -hmm. able to say, since 2024, this has been our plan. This is item B2 mm -hmm. on, our, 
on our plan. So it sounds to me like there are effectively, if you went to the other master, I, I, what, what I'm going to say is six projects, with the first being the CODA project, right, that, that right. runs the whole way. The second one being the path around the lake. The third one being the Jordan Park Lane connector. The fourth being what we'll call pool number one. And then another one being pool number two, which is that mm -hmm. tiny little, um, yeah, that little connect. And then the other one would be some valuation of other right of ways mm -hmm. that the village Maybe. might want to develop. Or south. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I would say that that'll be very helpful in coming years with, you know, again, mm -hmm. assuming the link is, gets approved, because it's a perpetual, um, it's a perpetual pot of money that everybody will get divvied up over the years. It'll be useful to have something in line that says, okay, we're ready to go with this one, let's get it engineered to go, and then we have a way to continually fund ourselves that way because it's moving along. So. And I know it's a separate idea that we've talked about, about Mary Yost funds, but I think about all the trees that we might have to take away for a potential pathway. Right. And I think if we don't couldn't do the stuff around the pond, I just looked up trees and made sure that they're perennials. You could potentially <laughs> offer trees to residents for, you know, if they have stuff that they thought yeah. that there was a tree, hey, maybe residents would like to sign up for trees. I don't know. I'm just trying to yeah, think. We can get, we can get, so we can get free trees. Um, that I, I will, Not that, you know, tiny things. ones, but if, if they're going in, if they're going in your yard, yeah. you're going to take a lot better care of it than if we're throwing a million of them just out somewhere and, and saying good luck guys. It's, it's kind of, I'm like, ah, you're taking um, out a big, cause there's going to, there's some big trees and you're like, I know that's not your tree, but here's something you can love on in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I'm we have a comparable tree. Like we, we, we know that this is a loss to you. And it's not your tree, but right. it is a loss to your, but you know, Mario's funds is perennials so only. Some people might not want those trees and they're expensive to well, and I, I have a, a brief update on the Mario's okay. funds yeah. that, that I can do in a Sorry, I just thought about that. No, it's just um, it's an idea. So, so there, there, is, <laughs> there is in the works potential funding for three of these projects. If, if the CODA initiative passes, we will see, I think it's a 30-year sales tax. I don't think it's permanent. Oh, it's permanent. It's a permanent oh, yeah. um, So we'll see... Money coming in, you know, undoubtedly for that, both initially and then as time goes on. We have now one request with the federal government and two requests with the state government for funds for the lake project. And then we have a request in for walking trail improvements, which are blanket enough that they could cover any of this or repaving existing paths or, or you know, painting a crosswalk, pretty much anything. So that could, well, the, the lake restoration funding would certainly encompass the walking trail around the lake and could possibly fund or be part of the Jordan Park Lake Connector. So my thought would be if we were to write a paragraph about each of these thoughts and then put them in a single document, we could give that to council to say, this is a comprehensive plan that planning and zoning has put together for looking into the future on walking trails and, and path improvements. Um, if and when funding comes available, you can point to this and reprioritize as needed. Mm -hmm. Finish your sentence, I have a question, sorry. Um, and, and that would, you know, we, we don't need to plan all this out because we can't afford any of it. It's like, it's, it's, it's silly for us to say, let's, you know, let's measure everybody's, everybody's driveway to yeah. make sure it fits in the right spot when we can't afford to do any of it. But the second that we find out there's funding available, council could then say, okay, here's the stuff on our plan we would like to do this, yeah. and then council, us, streets, whoever, can say, yeah, the, the menu was there, this is what the funding best goes for, let's do it. Tell me more about the sales tax thing, you lost me. Is so, so, about so, this is, so, so the link us is a sales tax, it's not a property tax. Okay. It doesn't directly, so as you know, sales tax. All of Franklin County. Right. Thank you. So it's more of a Franklin, so the sales tax of Franklin County will go up a, a slight bit, you know, in order to fund this, but it means, it means yeah, somewhere between 
40 to 60 million a year in perpetual funding that is goes back into all the communities of Franklin County. That for, and, and trust me, Columbus did an assessment, you know, the dispatch did an assessment of Columbus's needs. They've got a lot of needs. You know, they've got a multi-billion dollar need because they cover most of the county. We don't have those kind of needs, but but there's definitely a need for funding for the for the county as a whole. We you know have a smaller need, but we still get a we can still get a piece of that pie. Um, and you know it's it's one of those things that sales taxes are nice because it's it they're, they're progressive tax. You know people people spend more. You go out and you buy luxury vehicles. You're in a tax on or you know just you're paying a little bit more into the pie. So so I prefer those to versus income tax, which is you know the way our current system is a little bit tiered progressive, but people don't like that and I've been to property taxes are rough on them, especially people who are retired already. So this is a it's a good opportunity for us to get some funding and I'm hopeful the voters, you know, pass it for is do you know is is the proposal for a formula in funding or is it project based or uh, well the formula for the you, you mean as far as the approvals of these projects or what, what did you Yeah, mean? so I mean m money comes in from other money comes in a pot. Right. And then and then how does that pot then get dispersed to various communities yes. based on the formula, or is it uh, based on the process? Based on, and the so groups? right now they're, they're going through. So Morsi is, is overseeing this for for code, and so they make there are various committees, you know, which we're part of the Northeast one, and they go in, we present our projects and everything, and then they go through their process. It's evaluated. There's always one of the code planning engineer people are at the meetings, um, and then at the end of the day, the code board will make. We'll make um, you know once the money's approved, we'll make the approvals each year. Of course, based on recommendations of staff that's already brought up right. and done and presented to them. So yeah, I mean, I'm getting, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves. Right. I just want to make sure that it's not somebody saying, "Okay, you guys got your one project. We'll see you in 40 years." No, and, and, and we're going to build Columbus and Third Cruise Stadium. No, no, the money doesn't go to Cruise Stadium. <laughs> 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 well, now it's going to Cleveland. They'll figure it out. Now it'll go to the Brown Stadium. Mine would too. They'll figure out how to do it. Um, Did you ask for lunch? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so does that I mean does that make sense mm -hmm. for us just to say we've gone through the thought exercise, we put it on paper, and now if there is a, like this is kind of the plan for this is to have in our back pocket, not to advocate for today, so that we can say it's a Here scaffolding. Goes. It's a scaffolding. Yeah, exactly. And and the second that there's a dollar available and someone says where should we put this, we can say. Reread this that's document and we talk and, about this. Yeah, here are ideas, and we're ready to. If if it's streets, if it's us, if it's whoever, we're ready to you know to run and get you all the details. But it doesn't make sense to do it now when who knows, you know, funding for the lake could change the park lane connector. We shouldn't figure that whole project out now. Correct. Without knowing what it's going to look like. If that's cool with everybody, then I'll work to put some simple short document together that we can all look at at the next meeting and then push on to council. Council would appreciate that. <laughs> cool. Well, um, I think that as much as it's, yeah, some of these property, and yes, people are gonna be unhappy, knowing that it's also not coming out of just our budget mm -hmm. helps make the argument why now is the time. Yeah. Right, right. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Well, and I, I know people don't like to hear that, but there are thousands of residents and this is something that many, many, many of us have dreamed about for how long. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it has to go somewhere. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't ever want it to be. It's a, a tragedy happened because we didn't have the funding because people are walking in the street mm -hmm. in the middle of the night or whatever. I mean, I want them to be able to walk, but also, yeah. like, safety and, and, for me. Yeah, I, I think, you know, priority. like you said, 50% of the people are going to be fine with it because it's not going to be on their side of the road. Oh, yeah. But then there will be rest. Like if you if you told me you wanted to put a sidewalk through my yard, I'd do backflips, right? I think there are going to be or oh, side, yeah. sidewalks through oh, my yard. Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, there, there are going to be people who say, "Oh, great!" Especially when you go along there, there and there's a retaining wall that they put mm -hmm. in, and you gotta get rid of that to put in the sidewalk. And we're, you know, trees. We already have that problem with a, with a project that we're working on. We have to meet with the residents. So. Like nine feet in. Like, yeah, realistically in some spots, so it'll be, yeah. Well, I mean, if you go yeah. look at the one across the street, you can kind of see how much it's going to. Mm -hmm. That was the flagpole one. At the end of the day, 90% mm -hmm. of these people still would have bought the house if there was already a sidewalk in front of their house. It's just, it's because mm -hmm. it's new. Mm 
this could change. Yeah. This could change. Yeah. Yeah. change yeah. Like but also, it does. It feels like loss at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When, when, when that person then sells their house and somebody moves in with the kid, mm-hmm. and, they they say, and they say, cool, you can ride your bike. Yes. Right. You it, know, it adds yeah. that. So from one end of the neighborhood to the other, and you can do it that mm-hmm. way. Then, then I'm going to pay more for that house. It's going to be a smack in the face to some people, but you can't change that. Yeah. When, cool. So if you're adding sidewalks, are you at that point adding curbs or drainage, or are there any street problems that would need to be or could be addressed so that's, at the same that's time? Part of the part of the interesting question from the standpoint of street projects, how those tie in, because inevitably if, if we're going to be redoing some streets over the course of time here, and they're going to be once we do it properly, there'll be curb and gutter that goes in, which will help with some of our drainage issues um, along these streets. You know, the first major project is going to be, you know, from Farview down to State Route 3. So we're going to redo that in uh, next year, Mayor, or is it, I think it's, I think it's 25 or is it 26? This one is 24. This one's 24. The Lake Road is 25. Right. So at that time, so at that time we had, you know, it, it's, it's going to get curb and gutter and it's going to, you know, be along there. So the whole street will be redone and the curb will be put up, which makes it safer. You know, people walking along the sides as well. Mm-hmm. Um, we had spec down sidewalk halfway on, on the north side of that project as well. But we now that we potentially have funding, that'll save mm-hmm. the village you know a significant amount of money along that stretch. You know, hundred thousand, one hundred fifty thousand dollars, whatever that would cost. So, and it's not your spot. So yeah, it's and yeah, I had asked the mayor in the last council meeting if the maple wood, because the maple there's maple wood that's going to get done this year, correct? Or at least it went out to bid. And I, I double checked with uh, Mike Flickinger and I asked about a curb and gutter is going to be there. And he, she sent me the plans, like, yeah, it's planned, it's in there, it's part of the bid. And I was like, okay. Yeah, that's why we have to go. That's perfect. Because I remember somebody saying, hey, every time we're renovating a roadway, add curbs and gutters. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Like so it's going to be a construal approach. But yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, it helps, it helps for a lot of reasons. I mean, we, we have issues where. You know, the, the runoff and heavy water flow is damaging. It's going down, you know, that part of the um, Minerva Lake Road, and it's ruining people's fronts and driveways and stuff like that. There's no curb guiding it at that point, right? It's just taking a big piece out of people's yards. So. I mean, I'm a fan of curbs personally, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, with each project, you know, as we redo these roads, that, that basically that will be added. At that time, you know, the nice thing is, you know, perpetually, if that gets approved, there'll be a certain amount of money for us to ask for, and we'll know ahead of time when we're planning this project, because it's going to be a year to year thing that we're putting in, you know, a request for, hey, we're going to be doing this project, and we want to go at it, you know, and, you know, there's efficiencies of doing it all at the same time, mm-hmm. you know, either way, um, but the money will be the bad things in, so that we can at least get reimbursed, so we can We good on on pathways and curbs and whatnot for now. Um, quick update on Mary Yost funds. We've got we're playing a game of telephone, and we figured out who the executor and power attorney was for Mary Yost. And a villager has spoken to her, and this person feels that. If the money is spent, quote, to beautify Minerva Park with plants and such, That's then spending it is in order. Mm-hmm. And so if we can connect with her, have our attorney connect with her and have a quick conversation to make sure everybody's on the same page, then we can just move forward with, and you know, I, I don't know if we said this in the meeting, but my thought is, you know, Minerva Flora is great and they do really good work. Um, but residents move in, residents move out, people come, people go. My thought would be if we have to overpay for the installation, then overpay and do it once mm-hmm. and, and have somebody plan everything out and install yeah, install plantings that are gonna be good to go for forever without you know, the ability for a kid and a dog to, you know, to ruin half of it or, you know, for one bad year. Um, and, and so my, again, my thought is to take that Quiet Pond, turn it into Mario's Pond, spend all of the money and, and have something that yesterday 
looked like what you drive past and tomorrow looks beautiful and it's very minimal upkeep. You know, it's, it's maintenance, not, not anything beyond that. And it'll last for years and years and years. And it sounds like her executor is, is on board with that. So hopefully we can get that all confirmed up and maybe at our next meeting start having talks about maybe we could do a field trip out there and uh, start having conversations about and, and I, I would think probably we would hire someone smarter than us to, to give us plans. Um, yeah. As, as opposed to just us saying, we'll plant that, we'll plant that, we'll plant that, because we know none of us are equipped to do that properly. No. And, and how much money do we have in that fund? Uh, I don't know. A little over 20000 A little over 20000 A little over 20, little over 20. I think it's 23 or something. We spent a little bit some, a little few years back. Yeah. About, yeah, I want to say about 21 22. Okay. It's just, yeah, which should be enough That's to do something nice yeah. and lasting that everyone can enjoy. And again, I will, I'll chip in for the little placard that, that goes on the bench <laughs> that, that names it, you know, in loving memory. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that. If we want to push just a little bit more, I feel like we've had a lot of talks about bad houses. <laughs> and I'm ready to have the last one and recommend it to council. I have done some more research, um, looked into things. If, if council says move forward, then we basically place a call to the, what's the company called? Or the, the Bat Conservation International and say, tell us exactly what we need to do. They have plans for how you can build your own houses. We could also buy them. They tell you exactly where to put them. It could be a Boy Scout or a Girl um, Scout project. It could. Or, it, I mean, whatever. they, they have these options. things broken down to how to do it, you know, with half sheets of plywood so that there's no waste. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Exactly what to paint them with, what color based on what area mm -hmm. of the country you were located in. Mm -hmm. The downfalls, um, you know, why, why not to have bat houses? Number one, people don't like bats or they're scared of them. Number two, people are scared of rabies. Um, the reality is that bats carry rabies in the same percentages as squirrels and raccoons and foxes. Mm -hmm. If you see a dead animal on the ground, don't touch it. That's like, if, if, you're, if you're touching the raccoon, you got just as big a problem. Um, if we do it wrong, you can kill a bunch of bats by overheating them. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that is by putting a bat house that is too dark, that doesn't have a vent, in an area that's too sunny, mm -hmm. you can overheat and, and kill the bats. Having that knowledge is the thing where these companies come in and, and they're all about conservation. They will just give us the information we need. Um, so essentially, what are you asking council? I think that's so, so the question is, we, we, we would be asking them, number one, to get on board, and number two, to approve funding. But how much funding are we asking? And so that's, that's what we need to figure out. Okay. Um, and that would matter if we wanted to build, you know, have somebody build it would be a little bit cheaper. It's obviously much easier. Um, you can mount them on poles. This, is there a picture of the finished product here? So this is kind of them, you know, erecting it. And so you're, you know, you've, you've got them mounted on, on two posts that you've sunk into the ground with some quick creep. They're up 20 feet, so nobody's messing with, the bats. Messing with them. <clears throat> um, you can put them on dead trees as long as there's no branches all around. They love to be on the sides of buildings if they're 20 feet up. Like right up here. You've lost your mind. <laughs> <laughs> like right where? Not not but where I'm at. Right under the eave. On, on the outside, outside of this. Uh, no. We've only got three. three no, no, you don't want to put where there's a walkway below because of all the bat guano. Um, there's a history. I there's thought there's a walkway. There's a walkway so there. you can you can put them. Uh, they like to be within. They like to be within a hundred yards of a large large body of water. That means mm -hmm. a horse trough is big enough. Um, but obviously a pond is, or a lake is awesome. And so there's really no reason that, you know, as we're clearing the, for 
a walking path around to put some, you know, even closer to the water. They could be put up anywhere, and what did I talk to the company that was doing? Doesn't there have to be like a certain amount of space around it that's not forested? I mean, they, they don't they're... like to have to dodge trees to, to come in, to dodge limbs to come in. That said, you can find a space that, you know, there's a dead tree here and the next tree is 20 feet away and, and they don't have much of a... So is it best for to present something to council of like giving them a cost and, attached to it? Yeah, and so what I was going to... Like an option A, option B... Yeah, I mean, it would be it would be cheaper to build, but if, if we could get $2,000, and we'd need to talk to Chipper about the additional costs of, of sinking the poles, if he would need to rent a piece of machinery to do that, or whatever, and that would add. But the ultimate, you know, my ultimate argument is we allocate um, $8,000 a year for mosquito spray. I wouldn't, wouldn't spray mosquito spray because you still, I mean. Wouldn't it be cool if one year we did not find a mosquito mm -hmm. that had West Nile and wouldn't have to spray? And then they, I and it's stop that until that happened, and as of right now, it's not going to happen. Right, this is an investment. Mm -hmm. These these boxes don't have any. It's just going to take a few years for it to right. make make the difference. Yeah. Is your proposal for best houses that are going purely on publicly owned lands? Yes. Okay. Anybody can put a bad house up wherever they want to go. And I think that I think that without cutting it, I mean, I, I think that's why I have no. I'm, I'm going to say this for the record. I have no interest in the building to getting involved in putting bad houses up. I just don't. I think if residents want to do it, residents can do it. Like for us to go taking our maintenance team away from doing things to put in bad houses here, there, and everywhere and have to maintain them. And if a kid does knock it down, he has to go fix it and all that kind of stuff. It just seems like, yeah, I, I, this is just not my project. So this is all you guys. <laughs> no interest. I just think it's another headache for the, for the village. Now, if she loved that, it'd be a different story. But um, you know, <laughs> I, there's, there's just no, certain I see. things that yeah. we're, we're just, you know. What you want to put your time into. Yeah, we're, we're asking, you know, it's. It's, we have a maintenance team that does a great job that we're asking them to do even more and more and more and more each time that we do different projects. So, but it's not just that. No, I have no interest in, in having to maintain it. But it's not, I don't, I'm not counsel, I don't know it. So. And I guess like what what's the difference between we talked a lot about the frisbee golf, which would also increase maintenance so maintenance supply on like, like a more regular basis than the bathhouses because they have to continually mow those. But my thing is, is if people where, want to add a bathhouse, if they if they like bathhouses, mm -hmm. anybody can add a bathhouse. We could if we wanted to do some sort of program that people could do it and they could put it on their own house mm -hmm. or they could do whatever, like a program of that sort. I just don't want to be responsible for it. I mean, that's just my thing. Mm -hmm. I just don't want the village being responsible to have to deal with it. What do you mean by a program of that sort? Like, give them like the if we had, if we worked, we worked with, with the bus, if or? we worked with one of the um, Boy Scouts or something like that, if they wanted to build them or they wanted to do different things mm -hmm. like that, and they wanted to donate them, people want to come here and get them more power to them. But they're going to be on their own, but hang them, put them up, do mm -hmm. that. I mean, people in the village do have them. So I feel like mm -hmm. if residents are so excited about having bat houses, go for it. I know that sounds horrible, mm -hmm. but it's, I mean, I, I know I'm not alone in saying I don't, right. I don't want to be walking the path underneath the bat house. But I think just having more information, like you could put information in the newsletter about installing a bat house and how to install mm -hmm. them, and you could have bat houses for sale at the arts and crafts thing, mm -hmm. and just there'd be a way to market it or get it more out in the community, like raise the awareness of the availability of them that would have people mm -hmm. like, oh, well, that's easy. Or like just the knowledge that those bat, you know, like if you got a sheet of plywood, you know, have it be a weekend project yeah. or you know, those kind of things. I think that there'd be a way, like you could put it on the website. Um, you know, different things like- I think there's people that are interested in this. Oh yeah, mine, right. Say, yeah. I just don't want to Well, I, I think I that, you I know, making it-, it though, So, well, the flip side is people who are interested in it but would never be able to do it themselves. Would yeah. yeah. That's the flip side of that. But they're both valid points right. of view. And are they better to be closer to a reserve kind of area than opposed to being on my house? To the, make the effective or to make a difference. It's, it's more about the temperature. Okay. If they can find a good temperature and easy entrance, if it's going to be, it, the more insects, the, the happier they're going to be, mm -hmm. and they want to be fairly close to water. Yeah. Yeah, see, I see, I, I see a you know story in the village newsletter about bathhouses. And, and I'm, I'm in favor of both. I mean, we could put, 
we could put one of them up by Hidden Pond. And you could have you could have 250 bats up by Hidden Pond. Oh, that sounds great. Right. They'd be so happy. Just excuse yeah. me, and I'll leave. And <laughs> <laughs> good. Like, so, so then you're. I mean, so, so you're not. And they're, they're asleep all day. Mm-hmm. So when you go to sleep, they come and then out they come out at night and they eat their weight in bugs. Mm-hmm. And, and, yeah. and exactly. I will take a bug and, over a bat. Yeah. And on top I know of that, that, they're pollinators. My daughter, the house she's living in, like was had bats. In, in the, and yeah. she was she That's was weird. freaking yeah. out because they yeah because they were in the house it was yeah, yeah. So they're they're in the house and, and that's where like I'm, that's where I was like you put the bad houses and, and out and get them out of that house <laughs> <laughs> yeah so they they don't they're like not go Brady so bringing it back I know I, I had talked to Jeff Wolchek well just very briefly and asked him about disc golf and what we need to do and his his idea was hey what's the master plan for this. You know, where do we want to put stuff and, and how much money is it going to cost per time? So if you want to bring it and give it to, I guess, basically we need to, P and Z, I should say, needs to create that master plan, submit it to council so they can vote on it when appropriations come up for 2025, which come up in fall of this yeah, year. Yeah, start at 20 years. I don't even think it was that much. Well, you're going to be, depending on how we, we price it up, how much each hole costs, I mean, it, you can get two or three holes for somewhere between five and seven grand. Seven grand is probably the number you want. Ask for seven. But put the master plan together and say, okay, hey, for 2025, we'd like to, you know, for this. And then so the, the, the plan, the scaffolding for 2026 would be, hey, if two works out, let's do this. But also need to know, hey, where do you want to put those? And, and that way, once 2026 comes around, if 2025 passed, then you can go, hey, okay, here's the 2026 plan. Let's appropriate if if we find it necessary for that. And I think the same thing is going to apply to the bat houses for Dr. Wilczek. Okay. I think it's on the back side of the room. No, I don't know. I just doctored him up. <laughs> I love that. Well, it's better than that. So basically what I'm hearing is you are pushing us towards, hey, here's our deadline. Let's let's put these together. Reminder, this golf is still outstanding. Yes. Okay. We, I, I asked that. And that's so, it. So does, does plan. council agree? Does council want to move forward if we were to present a plan? We would they be likely yeah. to put it in the budget? Correct. Okay. And we would have to vote on it. I mean, you think we can still say no? Yeah. You thought that right. Yeah. And two, three other councilmen said the same thing. So. Okay. Should we do the same with bad houses or is there not a. I'm the only one that doesn't like it, so I'm going to stick it. I, don't, I, don't really think that's I think you should put it together true. because I think we have the opportunity to vote on it and discuss it. I and think if we, we want to, if we want to strike yeah. it if from we don't, we can't the appropriation, yes. we I mean, can read it. Right here yeah. is three chamber bat houses. Three and four chambers are what you want. It lets them move in between them to get the temperature that is most comfortable, closer to the outside, closer to the inside. So a three chamber, uh, five of them for 560 bucks. May oh. or yeah, maybe. they 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 show up to they show up to your house. You put them on a pole or you put them on the side of a of a building. Mm -hmm. And so the maintenance shed, depending on how tall that is, could get one. Mm -hmm. I like the heavy pond idea. It's, um, yeah. To put to put one on a couple of posts up there mm -hmm. or a dead tree up there, mm -hmm. like that's the yeah. dead tree is going to cost a lot. Yeah. yeah, and and mm -hmm. so I'm fine with it. If we can fine. identify how many locations do we say? It, that's, I mean, we, we didn't, but this is, this is five of them. So find five locations to propose in your, in your plan. Is that what I'm hearing? So, yeah, I mean, I, like, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not wedded to anything. Mm -hmm. It's, it's well, and 860 what if there's... bucks for 10 of them. You get, you get a, a bulk mm -hmm. discount that's the right. more you order. But do we have 10 locations? Like, is, is, building, right. is building plan A, plan B? And, yeah, and also, you, you know, these, are, these are made of cedar. Once they're up, they're up for a good long time. Mm -hmm. And so if you put them up and have no problems and then people start to say, man, I really noticed that I'm not getting bid as much as I did last year, then you, you know, spend a little mm -hmm. bit more money and put five more up in five years. Because what about anything like over by the amphitheater since we've been developing that area? Yeah, I, as I, a my, way my thought like would be to not work. put anything on a trail. Like yeah. the, the, oh, the mm -hmm. bats don't, like you, you need yeah, enough, enough room for them to get in and out. Yeah. But you don't mm -hmm. 
they, they don't want to be near us yeah. any yeah. more than the mayor wants to be near them. <laughs> right. That's very true. And so you, you put them out in the middle of a field, yeah. away from somewhere in the reserves. Mm-hmm. You put them, yeah, you, yeah. You don't, you don't, you're not going to walk under one unless you're lost. We've got plenty of places to stick them. Yeah. Well, yeah. ten bad houses in five different locations. If you're getting it's such a deal for ten of them. What? But with that being 10 locations, you don't want to put two bat houses in the same location. Oh, no, you, have to, you, you can put them back to back on the same pole. You, okay. can, you can build condos that'll hold thousands of them. <laughs> they, they, have you seen those? Yes. But I didn't know. Like a 10 foot, it's like a 10 foot, like a 10 foot, foot by 10 foot. We have the sharks in the chair. I like that. That makes it look like mine right now. That's all I'm going to say. I think we just start with the small ones, and then it, it, it isn't 10,000 10, at one time. You guys can start in. over in the pond. Yes. yes. <laughs> I mean, look, by the time you've gone to Henry you've been attacked by dogs regardless. So people came down and walked past, and now you've been. I mean, if we, had, if we had five, that would be, I, I don't know, maybe a thousand, about a thousand bats. And so if you consider each bat eats its weight. Why does this sound like a great idea? Let's invite the, invite the bats to Minerva Park. Because it is. They're here. They're here. They're here. They're here. They're here. They're already here. I see them playing over the house. I promise you there's not a thousand more. Yeah, yeah, here, we just need more so to eat all those. Yeah. If it factors, yeah. there's total effects, man. They're not like big, scary, dragging. It's hard to eat them out. They're not like big, scary, dragging. It's hard to eat them out. You can put it right in the middle. No, exactly. You get the big food, which is the same. It's not much attractive. It's the same. 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 And they actually did see that. They had to make a nice shape, like do a pollination. They will pick which house they want. Oh, I promise. Because then they can, like, act on, you know, bed, right? So they all, like, make some money. They all get along. And, like I said, you could get one. Well, it sounds like we need to, I don't know, how do we go about putting a proposal together? Yeah, you can link them all together. There's no distance requirements. There's no nothing. And, again, they they don't bother you. And so if... You know, if a bat can eat five hundred bucks, so there's and landscapers and there's expansions. That's just that's a lot of things. Yeah, that, that, that are not. Well. Does that that are not right. No, or just or a quiet person. person. Okay. So I mean, mm-hmm. we can we can say what we want, but if we had price. someone do All right, a back landscape plan, that okay. Um, do we just want to put a pin in bat houses, or do we want to? I said to make a plan. I think we, yeah. You get moving well, before you've got like, yeah. Well, yeah. It's it, we're after eight o'clock now, so I okay. want to make sure that we can all. So do we agree to make a plan for the disc golf, make a plan for the bat houses? Yeah, I'm sending Brady an email right now. Make a plan for the walking path. I feel like a manager. Oh, so we don't the need walking paths. I'm fine with taking the lead on and just putting together. Like what here's here's a paragraph mm-hmm. about each of these things that we discussed. Yeah. They are not ranked. They are simply. Here are trail improvements, walking path improvements that we believe would benefit the village. Mm-hmm. Walking paths. And, and that then gives council the opportunity to say there's funding available or we just heard about this grant but we need to have something to submit. And then they can say, great, here's, here's a place we can mm-hmm. start. When do you anticipate hearing from Mary Oost? It's just, we, we just a phone call? Okay. I assume in the near future. Okay, because that's something that we can start. Yeah. Because there's actually a couple organizations. There's like a Licking County was one, and then there was a Delaware County like pollinator pathway type of groups mm-hmm. that are out. And I don't know what kind of funding or grants are available for those, but um, it seems like if you if we could connect in with some of those folks, maybe they know landscape people that could put a plan together mm-hmm. and say this is what we're doing and if it's a pollinator garden then you have the opportunity to actually do education like right I think that's get hard money part. for education that's if you well. don't find somebody that's willing to donate time or do something like that some of those plans can cost you ten fifteen thousand dollars right. before you can start a plan so right. Right. you might get four plans out of twenty five thousand dollars twenty two thousand dollars so I think we really need to invest in someone smarter than us Someone, yeah, because if you want to talk about houses, you definitely don't want to talk flowers with me because, oh, that one's pretty. That's as good as it gets at this point. 
Use your use your <laughs> key. <laughs> Councilman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so let's talk then about next meeting. Okay. Which I think. So the next, uh, what should be the next meeting is Juneteenth. Mm. And I don't want to do that. Do you want to move it within the same week or do you want to move it out of week? Um, unless, I mean, that... that no, I think we should respect the holiday, especially for people who have well, no, I agree. I think so, too. Yeah, I think it's official holiday for the military. Yes, yeah. Okay. Um, so we could bump it out to the 26th. Or you could have your regular meeting the month, the day before July 4th. That would be officially a regular scheduled meeting for assembly on the 3rd. What's wrong with you guys? No, I was thinking more like the yeah, 18th. No, that's, not like that. Instead of the 19th. Not or you could skip time. that month and business you got. Um, July 17th. Brady, why are we making big jumps? Why can't we just move it back a day or something and keep it the same? Well, I don't um, know what's on the We have to check on the calendar too. Okay. I, don't, I, don't I, I just didn't know if there was a reason that I was moving this down. No, we, we, we regularly schedule, we, we miss this one, we regularly schedule our meetings. The first and the third mm-hmm. Wednesday, we hold those days for PNC's. What's the address here? About 2029. Um, you get a pizza? That's the uh, <laughs> drag queen cookie yeah. baby uh, class. Okay. It's here that day. Yes. It'll be fun. My wife will be there. Um, we could do the 26th, and again, this would be a work session, so if folks can't make it, then that's, that's fine. We could, do the, we could do the 26th and, and try to have it. Uh, we could do a field trip. Do the 26th and then. Skip the third or yes, for sure. I know, yeah. I like that. We would be the 26th and then, like, in Seven. theory, the 24th after that, but we, we or the 17th, I mean, 17th. yeah, the 17th, which I know I can't do, but that will cross that bridge, right? <laughs> and, and there's, of course, precedent taking a break in some time, too, right? So. Um, let's okay, so let's do the 26th, we'll start. Here. Okay. No. It'll be more fun if we don't. Well, let's do the 26th and meet at, at Quiet Brook Pop. So you can park on Black Sycamore and then walk past Black Sycamore Pond down up to the, the that second pond off of Quiet Brook. And are we going to still start at 7? And we'll start at. So, no, I mean, that's 7. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, right now. Oh, yeah, no, it's fine. I was just making sure. Um, and, and we'll talk a little bit about Mario's there. And then hopefully I will have sent out some stuff prior to that about. We'll just need to chat in between. Him. Lewis will talk about, we'll get, I'll get you guys on, on some more thoughts about where exactly to put. This golf hole. Is yeah, if you guys can get, I mean, this is just if you guys can get the locations of where you think it's going to be, and the mm-hmm. cost is probably the biggest thing, and then whether or not you guys have the next initial thought of if you expanded it for 2025, because don't forget, if you were wanting to add nine more <coughs> six months later, if you guys don't talk about it now, you're not going to have the funding for it. So if you want to go that far, even if we don't do it, you might want to have the plan. Um, I'm just trying to tell you what, and that's going to be, we start that conversation in July. Right. So just, it's just, I mean, really what it is, is you just have a document that goes in with the um, finance committee, you know, and, you know, if you'd like to allot some money for this purpose, it's really all the starting point mm-hmm. is. So it, we're, we're, our next meeting is in five weeks. In between homework now and then, the homework is to think about where you would want holes if you can take maps like this. Yeah, if you need digital maps, you guys can email yeah. me. Well, I can right. Photoshop it up. And, um, and then at the same time, everybody else, take a look at the proposals, see what you guys think. And then at the same time, if you think you have a good idea for where a bad house could go, 
and we'll just see if we can't have two maps, one of them with, with pins all over on potential yeah. bathhouse locations, mm -hmm. one with pins on potential holes, and then when we get together, hopefully mm -hmm. we've everybody's had a chance to look at those and then we can talk a little bit. Can you be responsible for just sending out two, or I guess one blank map twice? When is Art in the Park? It's June. Art in the Park is June 1st. June 1st, okay. And then the only other thing is when you find out about the Marios, if you can let us know that instead of waiting, and then maybe we can start reaching out to a couple people. And finding out if they're willing to help, even if it is mineral yep. flora, or if it's something that you know we do want to reach out to somebody else. I mean, you're more than welcome to take, mm -hmm. reach out to a couple people. Um, maybe we can get a little bit of a head start on that. Yeah, I will call Jesse on Friday. So yeah, if we hear anything that we can do that, it would be if we can start. And we're only talking about. Not the lily pond, but the, the one next to where the muskrat is. I, I yeah, I don't I don't know if I'm off base or, or commanding this conversation, but that that is my thought. Is is that opposed is to thought. sprinkling yeah. this as opposed to sprinkling the money all around and saying, oh, that's a Mario's bush, so, and that's to just do one thing, boom, and and that that pond to me is the ugliest. Right so now. I think the <laughs> only thing that I'm gonna say is I have been working with Aquadoc and Aquadoc said it was not smart to come out and remove all the cattails and the trees and all of that stuff until the fall. So there is a plan as of right now that I'm waiting for a new estimate because it was last year um, for them to get me a price to remove all the big trees that have grown in around that pond and I don't know what it's going to look like after that. So I hate to say that I don't want to put this on the back burner because then I sound like a little poop head tonight. Um, but I am telling you that that is something that we already have money budgeted we set aside to at least remove those trees and stuff. So I don't know if we do anything to that before that's done or if that will, we would need to talk to them and find out. Maybe we're doing something that's not going to affect that. So that's the trees that are like growing out of yeah, the there's culvert and stuff pepper, like yeah. that. Yeah. So I don't think anybody place. who's doing any planning to say, oh, and by the way, this you, is all going to be go. gone. Yeah. Take yeah. that into account. Mm -hmm. and say, Thank you. Bummer, because we were going to charge you to pull that out. Right? Don't yeah. think about what you're <laughs> deleting. Think about what you're going to add. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the plan is to get that stuff removed in the fall. That's right. And there's going to be, a, is it a fountain in that pond or an aerator? Or, I so mean, they put the electric in. in. So, so, there. Is there. so the, the fountain is there. has been installed in two of them, and then the aerator has been installed in the other one. Okay. And those were done um, just for this nice little thing right here, and for everybody to know in this room. Um, we picked the items that we picked based on things that we would like to have seen, but we actually took the recommendation from Aqueduct with the size of the ponds, with the depth of the ponds, what would work and what we could afford. Um, that's where we ended with what we got. So okay. it wasn't like we that's picked right. this for that pond because whatever. It was with the recommendation of Aqueduct, which we've used for years. And that's cool. basically keep the algae yeah. out. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So, where did you say that you said three and I don't even know where we There's two um, fountains, sure. which is the one that's not uh, that's Sycamore. Or I mean, Sycamore. Sycamore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. Right. The Lily Pond just has to the area. Okay. And then the other one is Pond. Like, I don't know what the one is. And that's Quiet Brook. That one's the one that's down past the tunnel. And Quiet It's a little louder than I thought. It really sounds. The one that, yeah, the one with the water. That's the one Several I don't know. It's the Lily Pond. the water. It's not the Lily Pond. That one is the Lily Pond. There's the Sycamore. The Lily Pond is also the other two stagnant. Right. That will quiet. And the reason that there's not fountains and also. Even say is the reason that there's not anything for the north or south lake right now is because we're planning millions of dollars worth of projects. Why would we do that right now? Right. Um, the hope, or you know, the end project, I can't imagine would not include fountains, but we're so far past fountains, or so <laughs> that that we're the world. Yeah. So yeah, so far behind, past, <laughs> anywhere in between. Those are not going to be yeah. overlooked, but right now that is the Least. spending twenty five thousand dollars to put a fountain in there does make you're just going to have to think about yeah. it. Yeah, we, we're not doing that. No. Trust me, one that we we'll get to celebrate, we'll do everything. Yeah, we're, we're going to Bellagio, nice. yeah. like and this pond will have more than one. So, and and it's the ponds that were done does not mm -hmm. mean that there won't be additional ones added later. 
And I'm just going to go, that's all we can afford right now. Yeah, that's fair. There you go. We appreciate your fiscal responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Well, hey, I think that they have them at all. It's pretty awesome. Exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. and that will help the mosquito problem, right? Yes. Yep. A lot, of, so, yeah, a lot of people comment on that. So. And there's less geese. And we can <laughs> change oh, the geese. colors We're of the lawn. I know. How it's frequent cool. is it changing? I mean, every night? So, well, it's been there so, two nights and well, we've like had two different colors. colors. Yes. Yeah. It was pink at first. It's blue right now for police week. And then we'll probably just do like a multi. And then anytime there's something going on, I'm not the yeah. person to know that. But if somebody says, hey, change it to this color because of this, like St. Patrick's Flashing Day. Flashing Morse code. Does it yeah. rotate colors? Like you can <laughs> it will. Through a rainbow. It will do a rainbow. And that's probably what we'll do next so everybody can see the colors. Well, yeah. It's like my house. That's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Memorial Day weekend is or... red, white, and blue. I'm... So, yeah. yeah. So if we can do stuff like that, um, we're no. learning how to do it. But <laughs> at this point, we are. I mean, Jason's not sitting over there with a remote control. <laughs> no, no, I'll trust Jason with no. me. <laughs> James has already said he is in control of it. He needs to. To, he needs to have access. We said that's why it was pink happen. in the beginning because yes. we thought it was him. <laughs> and I would have left it alone. I don't care what color. I mean, I don't get to see it, unfortunately. But yeah. it was changed to blue only because it's police week. Hmm. I thought the blue was nice. Yeah, it, it, yeah. yeah, yeah I think blue. the blue is pretty cool. We yeah. actually drive different routes from the black yeah. yeah. And I'm sure at some point it's going to stay green for a little while because of an urban park green. Yeah. Like, why not? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure it'll be different colors here and there, but that yeah. was my, my two cents. Yeah. Like Mary Yost fund twenty three thousand three hundred eighty five dollars and twenty seven cents. Okay. You can have the three thousand. We get the twenty thousand to go <laughs> play with over there. You get to pick your flowers for three thousand. I don't want to pick any flowers. I want twenty seven cents. That's how the fund is going to see if it's going to be like a like a single ball. <laughs> single ball. <laughs> there are back gardens. You two. <laughs> better stop. All right. Are we done? Anybody that listens. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say? Exactly. Who's not the mayor? Oh, I do not have anything else to say. Okay. Uh, it is 829 right there.